I built and deployed an iOS app, an Android app, a Chrome extension, a Firefox extension, and a web app in exactly 12 weeks, and I'm going to take you through each step of the journey, showing you exactly what I did. The project is called NutriScan Labs, or NutriScan for short. The premise is simple, it's a suite of tools centered around enhancing the nutrition facts label of food items. Like most things I build, the project began out of personal necessity. A few months ago, I started a body recomposition, which is the process of trying to build muscle while simultaneously losing body fat. Without getting into the details, this process requires a specific type of diet, where you consume large amounts of protein for muscle growth, while keeping your calorie intake relatively low to encourage fat loss. This means that you need to target protein-dense foods, which are high in protein relative to their calories. This meant that I would find myself walking around the grocery store, manually dividing the protein by the calories, in order to derive the protein density ratio, which I soon realized could easily be automated. I first began by injecting an additional row for protein to calories directly into the Nutrition Facts label. On the mobile app, the label would be brought up by either scanning a barcode with your phone's camera, or by searching for a food in the search bar. With the browser extension, the Nutrition Facts label already present on any grocery store website would be parsed in place. At this point, I realized that I could allow users to define their own custom metrics, such as caloric density, which is calories to weight, or anything else of the user's choosing. They can even define price to calories or price to protein to know how much they're spending on their underlying macros. For the main two metrics, being caloric density and protein density, I also provide a visual graphic, allowing users to compare this metric to that of common foods in order to get a point of reference. After I was done building this functionality, I also decided to convert the serving size label into an interactive button, allowing users to modify the household serving size, metric serving size, or calorie count in order to scale the entire label up or down. This is quite useful, as you can quickly ask yourself things such as, if I wanted to eat a 500 calorie meal, how many chicken nuggets should I warm up? Or, why is the serving size on a frozen pizza one quarter of a pizza? Let me scale this up and view the label for the entire pizza. This saves quite a lot of time, and allows for easier comparison between different food items. Now that you have an idea about what NutriScan Labs is, let's go ahead and walk through the development process at a high level. NutriScan first began as a Chrome extension, which took the bulk of the development time. Roughly 10 of the 12 weeks were spent building the Chrome extension alone, bearing in mind I could only allocate residual amounts of time to the project. At the end of the 10 weeks, only a few minor changes were needed to port it into a Firefox extension. At the time, I only thought that this project would remain as a browser extension. It wasn't until the end of the development process that I thought about turning this into a mobile app as well. With the browser extension, you just open the popover and click to enable NutriScan on the current website. It will detect and parse any FDA-compliant Nutrition Facts label already embedded within the website's HTML and apply all of the features I talked about earlier to the label. The most challenging part about the browser extension, and the reason why it took so long to build, is because I wrote a single algorithm that is able to detect valid Nutrition Fact labels on any website. I tried this on Whole Foods, Amazon Fresh, Safeway, Trader Joe's, Publix, Costco, and more, and they all seem to work. The algorithm has not fed any hard-coded information about how any of these websites look ahead of time. When I first started writing the extension, I started using Whole Foods as my reference site and simply hard-coded CSS queries for each macro within the Nutrition Facts label. I quickly realized that if I wanted NutriScan to function on any website containing a compliant Nutrition Facts label, I would need to create, and worst of all maintain, hundreds if not thousands of these mappings for each grocery store website, which would quickly become infeasible. The main challenge with developing the extension was writing a single piece of JavaScript that could detect and parse a Nutrition Facts label on any arbitrary website. This means that the code I was writing could not have cognizance of the DOM, but instead needed to begin at some anchor point and slowly map out the DOM one step at a time. This is similar to solving a maze in the dark with a flashlight. You need to take one step forward at a time in order to illuminate and inform yourself of the next possible steps before repeating the process to map out your surroundings. I'll try and keep things brief here, as I was even thinking about creating a dedicated video explaining how I built this algorithm. 
To begin, I thought about the one thing that needed to be consistent across nutrition fact labels, irrespective of the structure of the HTML, which is the text content. I queried for text nodes containing the string of text, serving size, and considered these as candidates for the nutrition facts label leaf node. I would then begin to ascend the ancestor chain of these leaf nodes, meaning I would take a look at its parent, grandparent, great-grandparent, so on and so forth, pausing at each step, and evaluating to see if they contained other nodes, such as household and metric serving sizes, calorie counts, and other macros. Once I reached the closest node containing all of the required nodes, I would deem this node that I finally landed on to be the node that represents the entire Nutrition Facts label. I used similar algorithms across NutriScan. For instance, in order to be able to inject a row with a custom metric, which I highlight in yellow, I need to be able to detect and clone the row of an existing macro within the label in order to repurpose it into my own custom metric while having it retain the same styles and formatting. For this, I would query for the name of a macro, such as sodium, and consider any positive matches as candidates for my leaf node, and then begin to ascend the ancestor chain, stopping and evaluating to see if a neighboring macro were to be found, which in this case, the neighboring macros would be cholesterol or total carbohydrates. If not, I would keep on moving up to the next parent, until eventually, I would find a neighboring row. At this point, once a neighboring macro has been found, I knew that I had located an entire row within the Nutrition Facts label, which I could then clone and repurpose for my own custom metric before re-injecting back into the label. It was quite a unique experience writing code where the code I'm writing isn't cognizant of the DOM that it's operating on and needs to slowly map out its surroundings. This was the most challenging part of this project. Due to the nature of these algorithms, they're non-deterministic. During development, I would test them on one website, see detection failures, fix them, and then test on a different website where new detection failures would arise for different reasons. I was basically playing whack-a-mole, trying to make the detection algorithm as robust as possible. Ideally, I would continue to refine the algorithm, although post-launch, most of my time is now going into the mobile apps, not the extensions. At this point, let's recap. My browser extensions were done. I had front-end JavaScript code that could detect the HTML of any Nutrition Facts label and apply all of my functionality to it, being the custom metrics and scaling the serving sizes. I realized that if I were to build my own standalone app that fetches nutrition data and compiles it into a Nutrition Facts label, I could simply apply all of my already written code on top of it. I could then provide all of my functionality on the go without needing to run it on top of an existing website. I first began to build a standalone web app, which was quite simple. You could scan a barcode with your camera, or search for a food item in the search bar, and it would fetch nutrition data and compile it into a label. I used a data source called Fat Secret to supply me with this data. Once that was done, I simply copy and pasted all of my extensions code into the web app, essentially treating my own web app as one of the third-party grocery store websites that it would need to parse. Because of this, development of the web app only took me a week. Next, I realized that I should turn this into a mobile app as well, as I imagined mobile phones would be the primarily used platform. Unfortunately, I have no experience doing mobile development whatsoever, so I decided to use a service that packages a website as a native mobile app. Essentially, my app is just a web view, which is basically just a web browser embedded within an app that renders content from my website. Because of this, there was no real development to do for the mobile apps. It was only the web app that I needed to build. Most of the overhead had to do with actually launching them to the App Store and Google Play Store, which is more rigorous than I would have assumed. At the end of the 12 weeks, I had successfully developed and deployed a Chrome extension, Firefox extension, web app, iOS app, and Android app. It's only been about two weeks since I launched, but I began to make short-form videos displaying some of the use cases of the app, and slowly but surely started to gain real-world downloads. Going forward, I was thinking about open-sourcing the project, and collaborating with others that might be interested in contributing, whether that be to add features they themselves find useful, or to be for the experience of contributing to open-source software. If you'd be interested in contributing, go ahead and let me know in the comments. If you're interested in giving NutriScan Labs a try yourself, I'll leave the links below. I'm open to feedback and feature requests, so if you have anything in mind, please let me know in the comments. If you've made it this far, you might be interested in checking out some of my other content. 
And as always, thanks for watching.